Hey YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you learned something, then hit that like button. I hope you enjoy my video. Hey YouTube, welcome to my final part on quadratics. In this lesson, we're gonna look at how we can use quadratics to model real life situations. So getting straight into it, in A-level maths, there is a huge emphasis on how what we learn applies to real applications. I guess now we can't ask the question of where will we use this in real life. I get all the time, um, probably not now that you're in A-levels, you've decided to choose A-level math, so I hear it much less, but when you teach Key Stage 3, they always we do Pythagoras' theorem and they just say, where do we use this in real life? Um, usually the answer is mechanics and they still don't really understand, but I try and give as best of a description I can. But since we're older now and we respect the subject a lot more, is asked um, much less. Now, in year 13, we will work in depth in modeling situations where an object is thrown at an angle. Here we can model the object's path and use time to locate its position. This is 2D projectiles. Um, even in year 12, we do do a bit of this when we look at SUVA equations and movement under gravity. But in year 13, we do it at a lot more depth. For example, I'm going to do a better example on the basketball hoop. But we can model the path of a basketball after it's thrown using quadratics. You can see on the right there, we have a little, I don't know, fountain. Under gravity, it forms what looks like a quadratic shape. Yeah. In terms of other shapes we can use in further maths, we have something known as the hyperbolics. Um, but here we would probably use quadratics for that, especially at A-levels. Now, getting straight into a question, the basketball is thrown over level ground towards a hoop. The height in meters of the basketball above the ground after t seconds is modeled by the function h of t equals 1.88 plus 5t minus 2.5t squared. t is bigger than or equal to zero. Interpret the meaning of the constant term 1.88 in the model. Now, 1.88 in the equation is the term independent of t. So you've got to think, what t value would you have to substitute so that you get 1.88 on its own? And that's t is 0. So when t is 0, you get h equals 1.88. So that is telling us, that 1.88 tells us the height of the basketball above the ground at the time when the basketball was initially thrown. Yeah. So in terms of this diagram, the 1.88 tells you how high is the basketball above ground at the time when the basketball is thrown. So 1.88 meters tells us how high the basketball is above ground. at the time at which is thrown, at which it is thrown. Okay, part B. At what times will the basketball be level with the hoop, assuming the hoop is three meters above ground? So for this question, we're just going to substitute H as three. So we're going to have 3 equals 1.88 plus 5t minus 2.5t squared. Move everything to this side so that the t squared becomes positive. So we're going to get 2.5t squared minus 5t. Then we're going to do 3 minus 1.88. So we're doing 3 minus 1.88. Never take the risk, but we get 1.12. So we've got plus 1.12. Now from here, we're just going to use the quadratic formula. So t is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Now you must make sure you say that 
But then we can just go over and use the quadratic formula. But letting the calculator do that. So we've got solving the polynomial, we've got 2.5 minus 5 and 1.12. So you've got 1.74, and this is in seconds, so 1.74, and perhaps in the exam, you'd want to write down the exact values first, and then round them to 3SF, and 0 0.257, now I've written meters there, it should say seconds, there we go, okay. Part C, write H of T in the form A minus B, bracket, T minus C squared. Now we should know what form that is. That's completed the completed square form. Change color. So first of all, we write everything in the correct order. So minus 2.5 T squared plus 5 T plus 1.88. Then we factorize out the coefficient of T squared from the first two terms only. So you get 2.5 t squared, then that will become minus 2t plus 1.88. Then we complete the square on what's inside the bracket only. So now we use a square bracket. t minus half the coefficient would be 1 squared. Then we subtract this number squared, which is just 1. Then we have that plus 1.88. Then we multiply in the minus 2.5, so we get minus 2.5 lots of t minus 1 squared. Minus 2.5 times minus 1 is plus 2.5, then we have plus 1.88. Now we want to write that first based on their form. So we've got 2.5 plus 1.88, so 2.5 plus 1.88. So 4.38, so 4.38, then we have minus 2.5 t minus 1 squared. Okay, that's our solution. So A in this case is 4.38, B is 2.5, and C is 1. Then part D says, using your answer to part C or otherwise, find the maximum height of the basketball above the ground and the time at which the maximum height is reached. So remember from previous episodes what we said. So the T minus 1 takes the quadratic and it moves it to the right by 1. The minus 2.5 just turns it upside down and the 4.38 is what takes it up. So the max height, H max, is. 4.38 and the time at which that happens is at 1. So that'll be meters and that'll be seconds. Right guys, this concludes our series on quadratics. Here I've shown you how to complete the square, how we use that to sketch quadratics. We've looked at inequalities and inequalities with fractions and now I've shown you a question on modeling. Now stay tuned because I'm going to do more work on quadratics and how we apply it to things like discriminants. We're going to look at how we solve hidden quadratics, so equations which don't look like quadratics, but they actually are. So if you learned something today, please hit the like button. And for more content like this, then hit the subscribe button. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.